Hello, my name is Linda Gabaldoni and I'm Head of Leadership and Organisational Development in Gloucestershire Health and Care NHS Foundation Trust. I think one of the benefits is it's showing that we really do want to engage with our colleagues and that their voice and their opinions matter. We know that people feel, you know, quite a lot of the time that they're not heard, they're not listened to, they don't know how to feedback, but actually this was quite a good way of saying your health matters to us. I really think we started to embed a feeling of well-being in itself that colleagues felt okay this trust is taking this seriously and actually really pleased this year because our number of colleagues who felt that the health and well-being support was good in the trust rose by 10 percent in during our staff surveys. I think the benefits have definitely been that it's been a, a great engagement process and listening process for us um, as a direct link to, to our colleagues views. Well, we were a newly formed trust and we'd merged in October 2019 and we'd carried out a pulse check during that time with our colleagues just to make sure we were listening to their views and hearing their voices. And then during COVID, we sort of paused that. And when we heard about this pulse check, we thought it was a fantastic opportunity to still keep listening to our colleagues, keep making sure that we really do care about their opinions. And the fact that this was focused on health and wellbeing was really important to us. We formed in our trust a health and wellbeing hub where we had members from operational teams, from communications, our Freedom Speak Up Guardian and our occupational health. And through that, we decided on how we might go best to communicate it to our colleagues. We really, really wanted to hear their views. So we worked very closely with our communications team and we promoted it also through our senior leadership network. So it was quite a lot of work, quite a lot of publicity, but it was well worth it because we, we felt that we would be hearing very up to date and very timely information back from our, our colleagues. I think the, the reason we've succeeded in doing it is because we very much did a you said we did approach. So I think the way we kept people engaged was feeding back what we did and, and we did that in an infographic way as well that made it very clear you said we did. One of the things that we really did was engage with our board and that board obviously includes our executives and our non-executives and we fed back on a regular basis what we were finding out from listening to all our colleagues and as a result of that when we were having we have quite a lot of different forms of communication so we do monthly team talk where people are just invited along to chat to execs. So we talked about it in there. We also, like I said, we talked about it in our senior leadership network to encourage people to do that, that survey so that they will listen to. We actually asked our leaders to give colleagues time to complete it as well. Even though it was a very short survey, it was important that colleagues felt they had time to complete it. So it really is an effort of not only being something that communications you know, lead through ensuring that we contact all our staff, but actually getting the support of our, our line managers as well to for them to understand that it's really important that we listen to colleagues.